Welcome back. In today's lesson, we're going to be finding the length of a side where the pronumeral is on top. Trigonometry. So what? So we've got a right angle triangle. With the power of trigonometry, we can find missing angles and sides. Before we move on, we need to look at an aside, solving equations with fractions. In our investigation of trigonometry, we are going to come across equations containing fractions. Now, we've done this before. When we're solving equations with fractions, we treat it the same as division. And in order to solve that, we do the opposite operation to both sides, which is multiplication. So an example here, 6 equals x over 3. Now, a common mistake people make here is they do 6 divided by 3 is 2. But that's not what we need to do. In order to eliminate the over 3, or the divided by 3, we multiply both sides by 3, which gives us 18 equals 3x over 3. The 3s cancel each other out, and we're left with 18 equals x, or x equals 18. So the steps that we need to take in order to find the length of a side are the following. Step 1. We're going to start by scribbling off the side with no information written on it. There we go. Scribble it out. Step two, we're going to label the sides, hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent, same as we've been doing in the previous lessons. Hypotenuse being the longest, directly in front is the opposite, and between the angle and the right angle, we have the adjacent side. Step three, examine your labelling to see which pair of sides you have. So, scribble out the one we scribbled out, goodbye opposite, and adjacent and hypotenuse are going to do a dance for us, so we're looking at adjacent and hypotenuse. The fourth step is to choose the appropriate trig ratio, sine, cos, or tan, for our pair of sides. Now, Sokotoa is coming in handy here. If you write it at the start of every page on your test or on your exercise book, that's not going to hurt. So we're looking for the ratio that has adjacent and hypotenuse, which hopefully we can see is cos. It's cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Step five, substitute all the known values. So we know that theta is going to be 60. We know that adjacent is going to be x. We know that hypotenuse is going to be 14. So bam, cos 60 equals x over 14. Now we have an equation with a fraction. So what do we do? We solve it and we multiply both sides by 14, which gives us 14 cos 60 equals x. So the 14 is multiplied to the front of the cos, not to the 60. And we type 14 cos 60 in our calculator and we get x being seven meters. Take a moment to copy all that down. All right, let's look at some examples. You can see I've got soccer tower at the top of my page already. Example one. Start by scribbling out the side we know nothing about. And then we're going to label hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. All right, examining our sides, we can cross off the hypotenuse. And opposite and adjacent are going to dance for us. So from soccer tower, that is the tan ratio. We're going to substitute the information that we know. We know that theta is going to be replaced by 43. Opposite will be x and adjacent will be 10. So 10, 43 equals x over 10. An equation with a fraction in it. Multiply both sides by the denominator and we end up with 10, 10, 43 degrees equals x. Now if we type that in our calculator, we get x as 9.33 corrected to decimal places. Example two, we... Again, start by scribbling off the side that we know nothing about and labelling our three sides, the hypotenuse being the longest, opposite and adjacent. Now we've scribbled off the adjacent side, so we can scribble off adjacent and opposite and hypotenuse are going to dance, which is the sine ratio. Sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Replacing everything we know, sine 32 degrees 8 minutes equals x over 29.1. To solve this, we multiply both sides by 29.1, which gives us 29.1 sine 32 degrees 8 minutes equals x. If we type that in the calculator, we get x equals 15.48, correct the two decimal places. A new is coming, so copy that down. Now in today's lesson, we have looked at our trig ratios, we have created equations with those trig ratios, and we've solved those equations all in a enabling us to find the length of a side in a right angle triangle. Now, in the next lesson, we're going to look at what happens when that letter is on the denominator rather than on the numerator.